I'm just gonna spam the bench. The game is super high on um on stream. For me? Yeah. Oh, for everybody. I don't know if you had Oh no. 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 <laughs> it's pretty bad. <laughs> I'm not sure yeah. if this is... Oh, wait, there we go. So, you guys said it's really loud for you? It's not necessarily loud. It's just over the game. Yeah, it's... Oh, it Oh, I think it's so why. <laughs> Alright, say something now. Something now. That should be Yeah, and that fixed it. Yeah, that fixed it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had the slider up, but I accidentally bumped it in the process. <laughs> Wait. Although now I need to put in uh, the noise canceller, so let me do that real quick. What kind of audio setup do you have that is it's complicated let's just put it that way okay i should have pulled everything out <laughs> if not we always thought it could have so are we allowed to talk now yes go ahead it didn't fix it it did not fix it what do you mean it didn't fix it We're, we're very over gamey. It's close. It's just... All right, let me try one more thing then. <laughs> Wait, uh, intro talk real quick. Hello, hello, hello. It's just a, me. I also have a uh, lower pitch voice, so. Do, 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 do. Not lower pitch, higher pitch. Wrong way. Do, 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 do. Yeah, it is just you. <laughs> I'm sorry. Right, let me get this back over where it needs to be. Okay, I accidentally skipped it. All right. <laughs> All right, test, test, test. I think you're even louder than like I am, which is saying something. I'm gonna actually pull myself down a little bit more too. The one thing I did get done is, is this is a new mic, so there's that. People will be pinging me on Discord, but the way everything is right now, for you guys that don't know, and I'm sorry about this, but. Uh, since uh, we switched show hosts, I have not actually had enough time to uh, get my studio put together because that happened, uh, to say, in the most inconvenient time. But um, for you guys that don't know, Buster stepped down as the host of the show. She's still in. I, I want to make sure everybody's aware of this. Like, She's still in our management team. She still actually handles operations uh, and has a big role in the team. But um, 
burnout is a thing and there's actually quite a bit of stress and work that comes into uh, trying to host one of these things so uh there's that um but i think we got some stuff working um let me know if it sounds a little bit better for y'all over there on the the twitter side or twitter twitch side and uh we'll uh we'll do what we can here um, if you don't know that, so it's going to be every other week. It's going to be two different toasts. Um, Gandor will be taking every other week. Uh, and for right now, it'll be me for the other side. And I promise by the next time, I'll have all my studio set up. So there's that. Um, also, uh, starting in May, our Hex Talk and our um, Mayhem events will be back too. So for those of you guys who don't know, it'll be a thing. But let me introduce uh, the wonderful people over here to my right on this wonderful view we have cesium who has made a long-term comeback hasn't been around for a little while so we're glad to see you here and israel frostfit one of the newest members of the night crew supporting everything that's awesome with that um and yeah for you guys who don't know who i am i'm k penguins i'm the guy behind the curtain if you will most of the time most people don't see me especially lately um and uh We've got a lot of exciting things to go through tonight. Um, I mean, we've got uh, 3.9 PTUs live, and it's not as you know fancy as everybody was hoping, but we've got the Prowler in the mix now. We've got new Babbage. Uh, we've got uh, some lore makers talking about like why every system is the way it is. Um, wait, what did I say? Did I not you say said 2.9. Oh, we're going back. <laughs> <laughs> um and uh what else um we got a little bit of insight into like how uh the uspu team is uh us features team in other words for the pu um does things and some other cool things with that so it was a very uh interesting uh time frame for sure um and it's definitely been good to see it come out after so much salt was thrown around to the point that uh I was beginning to think we were back in Rome, I'm telling you. So, anybody that guesses that joke, bonus points to you. Uh, one last thing before I uh, throw it uh, to my compadres here. If you guys don't know, there is, until the end of the month, a uh, raffle going on for a $50 gift card for people who are coming to watch our shows. Um, tomorrow night, the one, the one, the wonderful Segelian will be leaving up uh, the late night show about the same time. Except for, he'll probably be on time. And, uh, yeah. Um, I guess that's a good place to start. As uh, let's start with you, Cesium. How have you been? What's new with you? And uh, how are you surviving the COVID? And um, are you wave? Are you in the PTU yet? <laughs> Even though you just kind of answered it. <laughs> yeah. So um, first of all, apologies for how my voice sounds. I we're still trying to figure all this out. Um, but it's been pff, since like December even probably November since I've streamed or appeared on any of this. And it's, it's, been, it's been rough. I, I've been very busy with work. But other than that, um, I've been keeping up with Star Citizen 3.9. has uh, eluded me a little bit. I haven't been able to get into the, uh, the PTV yet for whatever reason. Um, but we're, we're having fun, and uh, I've been enjoying life. It's, it's been good, but busy. And uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to coming back to streaming. I'm sure we're all excited uh, that you're coming back too. It's I've been uh, there's been quite a few people like who's this cesium guy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've been gone for a while, and uh, I get that. But uh, you know, rest assured, I'll I'll be back. You know, it's still sorry. I'm gonna give you a, here in just a split second to drill. I'm feeling like I'm being a little bit rude by saying this, but I, yeah. it's uh it's interesting how like you and I first met was actually at TwitchCon, and uh, are you gonna make it back again this year? So uh, I kind of have a choice between TwitchCon and going to uh, SitCon. Hmm. Um, I could definitely make both, but um, you know, financially, while I can do it, I think that it would probably be, be better to choose between one. So it really depends on, on where everyone's going to be. Um, I'd love to make TwitchCon. I had a blast last year. I had a lot of fun meeting you. We, we hung out as much as we could. And, you know, I, I got to meet the entirety of the the Star Citizen, you know, crew that does all of the content. 
um, across YouTube and, and Twitch and all of the other streaming platforms. Um, but I kind of want to go to sitcom this year because if you, you, know, you just get a different... Yeah, sitcom yeah. is going to go to. Yeah. Um, I, I could definitely make both, and if, if that is something that can happen, and, you know, aside from all of this COVID um, stuff that's going on, if I can make it to TwitchCon, then I will make it to TwitchCon, and if I can also swing making it to sitcom, then I'll, I'll, I'll do both if I can. Yeah, and um, pay attention to some of the stuff we've been posting in our internal uh, conference channels too, by the way, uh, when you get a chance to get caught up. Uh, I definitely will. <laughs> what about you? Um, so I got laid off. Um, oh. yeah, that's, I mean, we're all right. We're all right. Um, we still have income and in all honesty, a lot of the, a lot of the benefits right now probably have me making more than I was. Uh, but I was a little sad to lose a job I liked. Uh, but I think the company did what was right. They were trying to preserve as many people as they could. Um, and keep as many people as they could, and I just wasn't one of the people who made the cut. Um, so I've been doing nothing. <laughs> I've been seeing you That's... streaming, uh, uh, hanging out with Spazzy especially quite a bit. Um, you yeah. know, shooting some people yeah. in the face. So yeah, I uh, I hop in whenever I can with him, or when I'm not sleeping, because <laughs> my sleep schedules my sleep schedules messed up. But it'll, it'll fix itself someday um but uh yeah i'm we're doing all right with covid um i have not gotten into the into 3.9 i'm not part of the wave stuff so i've been watching other people enjoy it, it makes me sad i wish i could go see it all in person hey i'm wave one and i can't even get in so <laughs> don't don't worry <laughs> i'm wave one but so much of my stuff is sprawled across right now that I don't think I could get it to work. It was a miracle that I pulled off getting even anything to work for the show. So, <laughs> like literally, I was, I was, we were laughing in the pre-show because in order for me to get this to work, I had to like hodgepodge a bunch of stuff. And like, right as we were about to start, all of it fell over. I'm like, please, nothing, come unplug. <laughs> but uh, yeah, uh, for myself, uh, I'm in wave one. Have been for quite a while actually with the concierge and also a subscriber. But not going to be able to play for probably at least a few more days. Um, I'm going to try to put some time in and get it done on Saturdays and maybe stream a little Saturday. But um, I've been doing all right with COVID as an introvert. It's like my dream. Um, <laughs> <laughs> my wife, on the other hand, it, she's a, a hardcore extrovert and it's just killing her. So uh, I hope for her sake that soon that they lift it. But I um, started a new job recently, so that's been kicking my butt. Uh, it's been taking a lot of study, a lot of mental brain power to, A, because I had three weeks of vacation before that, essentially, of doing nothing. Uh, and in COVID, so I was literally doing nothing but gaming. And then all of a sudden going from like that to, hey, we want you to do everything new and really complicated, uh, advanced stuff. Uh, because you're a senior engineer. And yeah. <laughs> so spending the evenings uh piecing things together if you guys that don't know um in the middle of a uh, studio rebuild so there's that but uh so let's talk about the prowler have you guys seen it flown in it a fan of it hate it what what's what you guys think so first things first i just adjusted my audio a little bit i don't know if it's going to be any better or worse you might have to bump me up a little bit um that being said, the Prowler is one of the ships that I've been, you know, since I've seen it, I was like, this is this is an awesome ship. It's it, it's great. The drop ships are, are cool. They have a lot of gameplay um, advantages and, and cool things that we can do when the game, you know, is a little bit more matured. Um, but the, the Prowler itself, just based off, you know, the exterior view and, and how that, that all works, is, is just a beautiful ship. I'm a big fan of... Uh, I, I like the idea of being able to fly into a, you know, drop zone that has been held off by the the ground company or whatever, um, and and be able to just drop out of the ship, no no problems, and and use that as some cover because the, the little winglets off the side of the, 
I guess thrusters on the on the left and right wings. Those provide some cover when you're in the uh, JTOL or VTOL setup, and, and I just think it's a really cool ship that offers a lot of gameplay um, advantages, disadvantages. You know, just different things that we can we can do when when the game is a lot more matured. Definitely. I think it's kind of cool that, uh, you know, the thing I always said about the Vanguard is, is like, it's such a narrow escape point for like trying to push a bunch of people out at one time. And even in the Valkyrie, like even with the way it is, uh, you've got those two small side doors and that's it for pushing people out. And this one, it's like, all right, everybody has their own door. <laughs> I think that part yeah. is the best part of it as far as a, a drop. I think that it's a direct answer to the Cutlass Black. Um, it, it doesn't work exactly the same way, obviously, but it has a lot of the same features displayed in, in different fashions than, um, you know, coming from the UEE or the quote unquote human race towards, um, and I am going to be honest, I don't remember the, the, the race that it comes from. Um, the, sorry? The Tavarn. Tavarin, yeah, that's right. The the avian race that we we see in uh, or will see in Star Citizen. This is their direct answer to um, a not necessarily copycat of the Cutlass Black, but something that can do the same thing. Yeah, um, I don't know. I I think it's definitely much more improved than uh, the Cutty Black because Cutty Black I always look at it as kind of like that, uh, you know old pickup that you bought when you were in high school because it was all you could afford and you know a couple of panels might have fallen off you didn't care because you got it for like 500 bucks right um yeah versus this one's a, a very much so designed by a warrior race for like how do we get people off the ship and, and fighting as quick as possible and get the ship out of there because their resources were finite so they needed their ships to survive more than they did their people <laughs> Uh, so it was draw people in, make sure they can find cover by giving them a little bit of protection. And then after that, all right, ship out warriors, do what you were trying to do. Um, and I, I, I love the precision of it, especially, um, each one of them though, I've, this is something that I've uh, talked quite a bit about in the past that every single drop ship has like its pluses and minuses, right? Like this one, you can't, for instance, drop a vehicle out the back, uh, cause the Tavarans didn't really have vehicles, so they didn't design it that way. That's true. That's a good point. And Yura, um, hopefully I said your name correctly. Um, I haven't personally been in, I don't think I've been in any of the Vanguard series of ships. Um, but I, I do see your point. However, the Cutlass Black has those side doors that the Vanguard lacks. And, and that's something that Cape England's brought up is, you know, it's, it's got these side doors, the um, aft exit way or egress point um, for a better uh, terminology there. You know, th there's these these specific things that these ships can do and, and the, the Cutlass, the cut cut, oh Jesus, words are hard. The Cutlass Black uh, has these side doors and uh, an egress point on the back. Does it not? I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. I have, uh, it has a there. back and left, right, um, just like the Valk does. That's that's what I thought. Yeah. So, um, while I I do agree that in terms of armor and shields and all of that kind of stuff, the um, the Prowler is more akin to a Vanguard, but in its functionality, I think it is closer to a uh, Cutty Black. So, Idril, if you had to pick one, and uh, you were, uh, you know, you and your gang were going to go and uh, drop on a base, which one would you pick of the drop ships we have so far? So that was Prowler. What's Prowler, Cuddy, Cuddy Black, and then what else have we have we said anything else? So we have the Anvil Valkyrie, um, and then we've okay. also got a um, uh, Vanguard Hoplite. So okay, so the I've not been in the Hoplite, and the Prowler looks cool, but I think I think currently I like. The versatility the Valk would offer, um, like for vehicles and and whatnot, um, probably looks real nice, um, from what I've seen. And I like, I like the concept of the shields on the doors, like, 
that's that's really cool that they have a shield over the doorways. Um, well, but you I just know that's think... not a uh, like a bullet shield, right? Um, it's an air shield. Yeah, it's still cool though. Yeah, it looks super nice. Cool. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I think I think from a gameplay standpoint. The Valk just offers more, um, and then I also like the name Valkyrie better, so <laughs> there's that reason. Right. I gotta give you that too. <laughs> Points. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like I always say that the the hoplite is like if you are expecting a lot of, I call it like a blockade runner um, drop ship. Like you're gonna have to actually do some serious combat. And like fight mm. your way through a ship uh, like blockade, for instance, and then drop troops like hoplite every day. Um, if you're, you know, uh, trying to uh, have like a very versatile ship that's gonna um, be on like a plant side where there's air, then the Valkyrie, because uh, it's a very versatile like land patrol kind of drop ship, in my opinion. But uh, the problem is, is you can't really do it on like moons or anything like that because it'll totally vent out all the air in there. Versus this one kind of fills a unique role because even if it's in space, like it doesn't leak air with the doors open. So if you're dropping on a moon or something like that, uh, it doesn't leak out any air at all. So it's actually kind of akin to that, which is kind of cool. Yeah, and to that point, I fully expect the... Uh design teams for each manufacturer to implement something like this on the ships that need it. Um, I think this was something that was able to be done, you know, now and wasn't able to be brought to fruition prior to 3.9. Um, so I, I, you know, and, and maybe I'm wrong, but I would expect the, the Cutlass series of ships to have a very similar function uh, the Valkyrie to have a similar function. Any ship that is categorized as a drop ship would would have this airlock sort of uh, force field. And maybe maybe I'm wrong in that it's just specific to the alien races. It's um, not just them. Um, sorry, uh, this is something I looked into a little bit. If you couldn't tell, but uh, <laughs> um, there's going to be certain uh, human ships, but most of them no. Um, it's mostly a Tavarian ship thing, for, so the Asperia uh, lineup. So it is more specific to "quote unquote" alien technology. Yep. All right. Well, I stand corrected. Um, but mean, go ahead. The, so the Valk has doors over top of like, well, across the 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 pilot pilot right. the cockpit. There we go. Couldn't think of that word. So, in theory, you know. Anybody outside of that area should never be outside of their suit. Exactly. And I, yeah. think, I think that's the other point to that is that a lot of these ships are just designed with the idea that unless you are sitting in the cockpit, you are in uh, your own suit to, to help with oxygen. Yeah. So that kind of that kind of brings up the point of uh, pressurization within the ships. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I personally haven't seen anything regarding those um, statistics or if they're going to even implement that. But, you know, if you're standing in a Valkyrie or a Cutlass Black in space and someone just fucking pops the door, does that depressurize, you know, that cavity within the ship and suck everyone out of it? Or are there going to be ways to set up and get ready for a, um, you know, drop point or invasion or whatever you're going to be doing can you depressurize certain areas of the ship that no, i'm not sure if that's actually going to be a feature or not that'd be cool though like your door pops off you and you're standing there you get stuck that'd be that'd be interesting gameplay like it, it'd change a lot of things yeah and i think like mag boots if you were standing would might like save you unless something you know of course bonks you across the head because it's getting sucked out behind you but uh uh, I think it'd be cool if they added that for sure. I know right now if you open the doors, like oxygen's gone. Uh, yeah, and that's part of the, that. you know, depressurization of a, a cavity within a ship. And I know that once they have, you know, the ability to disable a ship, that depressurization in an area will be a thing. But you know, that kind of brings to light: Are you going to be able to 
depressurize an area where people are able to jump out or whatever. Um, which kind of goes back to what you were saying, Adriel. You know, it, the say for example, the Cutlass Black. You know that 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 first cavity or section of the ship where the the pilot and all the beds are is separated by a single door on you know the aft of the ship or the midsection. So if if you say depressurize the midsection so people can jump out, what if a stray bullet or missile or whatever comes in and destroys the the single airlock door that you have? separating the cockpit area from the, the the midsection. If that gets blown up, does that depressurize everything else? Does that make it to where you know you only have X amount of time for the oxygen you have in your ship, or are you not wearing a suit? You know, it kind of brings up a lot of interesting gameplay options. Yeah, and I think right now it's not really as big of a deal because you're like, oh, A, you can die. It doesn't really do anything to you, right? But also, B, it's such short trips um but like i'm kind of thinking like what happens if uh you know once we get to more in state of this game oxygen and stuff like that's going to become more important especially if you're out in kind of you know rougher lands if you will where there might not be a place to go and refill up on oxygen for a while so i think that'll add some uniqueness too yeah and and something that uh, a friend of mine and i've been talking about um actually as recently as today um so Currently, in the universe, we have, you know, hold backspace, it just kills your character and you respawn. Is that going to be something that is in-game permanently? Personally, I don't think so, because they have the whole idea of having an heir or whatever, an heiress of your character. And so that would, to me, mean that this suicide button doesn't exist. So say you're sitting, you know, you're mining... You're doing your own thing, and some pirate or griefer comes up and just blows up your ship, disables it, you know, depressurizes the whole thing, takes all the cargo and leaves. That leaves you at that location just sitting there. You, you, you have as much time in terms of oxygen for the number of oxypens you have and the oxygen in your suit, then what? Do you just sit there and suffocate and die? Or, you know, do you have a system where you can call in friends or uh, maybe an NPC rescue option? There's a lot of gameplay things that, that could come to fruition um, that maybe I haven't read about or heard of. Um, but I'm a little bit curious to see how they tackle these issues. Right. Um, and, and so... I mean, they've started punishing stuff like that already. Like, so uh, I, I don't think it's far off for us to see something implemented to keep you from using that button unless you're bugged. Um, for example, you know, with the, with the with the the jail system now, and there we go, prison system. Struggling with words. Uh, you know, dying while being a, a pirate now has um, a a consequence um and it's going to uh it's gonna it's gonna punish a lot of people if they're not good at pirating or uh if they get caught out and die so they can't backspace because you just wake up in a prison now um and uh i think i think we wouldn't be too far off at once that whole system's a little better fleshed out and the gameplay around it is 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 pretty good we will see something to um, help with. Uh, yeah, with, with, with what you were saying, with stranded people who who can't who can't get somewhere. Um, well, you can already because, do it, right? You can say like a transport beacon. Uh, I, I could see something kind of a little more like that, as long as you are uh, in a uh, area where you can actually get communications. Like if you're hanging out in uh, Pyro, maybe you uh, are SOL. It's <laughs> so the risk yeah. of going through there. Yeah, and, and so that's something that, you know, we really, or that really hasn't been talked about much is, you know, are these, these beacons going to be cross-system? Are they going to be inner system? So, you know, if you get, you know, say your ship gets blown up or you blow up your ship or whatever and you're stranded in a pyro mining belt, can you set a mining beacon for someone that's several systems away 
um, I'm not sure. Uh, personally, if I was developing this game, I wouldn't let that leave the system. So just for hypothetical sake, if if you can't leave the system in terms of setting a uh, beacon of any sort, then you, you have to rely on either your friends that are playing with you or uh, a potential NPC contact that would rescue you from these situations. Well, it, it'll be interesting to see if there's just one comm system. Like, is there a UEE comm system and, like, for instance, a pirate comm system? Um, and maybe, like, if, for instance, if you're in Pyro, there is a pirate comm system, but unless you have, like, a crime stat of a certain amount, they won't even let you use it. It doesn't even show up or something like that. Um, that would be kind of an interesting bit, too. Yeah, I totally agree. Ooh, voice crack there. I promise <laughs> I'm not 13. <laughs> I don't know. The beard totally makes it look now. <laughs> it's so much shorter than it used to be. I hate it. I had to. I had to shave it for when I got my new job, and we're we're waiting until it's down here again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think a lot of that uh, is kind of cool. Um, they were talking about the building block system and just like how important it was um, in uh, the USPU uh, calling all dibs thing. And uh, about the fact that it used to take them a ton of time, uh, like they would say, like one new feature, for instance, to change one little thing took them like a week. And now it's yeah. like, all right, give me a couple hours. Um, and so I think a lot of these, like, f these, these kind of things that we're starting to see really quickly roll out has a lot to do with the fact that they finally figured out how to be a uh, gaming studio for one. Uh, for the most part, they still have some stuff to learn about. But uh, two is is they've uh, finally um, are getting to the point where they can roll out these like really cool features like the prison system and stuff like that. Um, I don't know if you guys have saw, but I'm pretty sure like three quarters of the night crew have ended up in prison this week. <laughs> <laughs> I know that as soon as I get into 3.9, that's what I'm doing. I'm going to prison. I don't care about any of the bugs that follow that. I'm going to prison. Yeah, that's pretty much where where you go you go look around what new Babbage, and then after that that's where the new content really is. So I think there's some new mining content, but but it's mostly prison. Yeah. Yeah, and and the whole you know new content aside, I think that you know back to what you were saying earlier is it's punishing those those people that you know pad ram or hunt players for no reason. And, and I think these are really good gameplay aspects that not only help the, the universe be a little bit more fleshed out in the sense that there is sort of a law or rules to abide by, but it, it's, it's starting to form itself into a, a place where, you know, when, when this game is released, when it's done, when everything's fleshed out and it's post-beta, you know, a new player can come in and spawn at, you know, Port Alisar or whatever, wherever they spawn, and they can experience the game in a positive manner. These these prison systems and all of the fines and et cetera uh, hopefully will deter players from just going out and just being, for lack of a better term, an asshole, which I've never really appreciated in games, but... Everyone has their way to play a game. And I, I think that as long as new players can have their, their time to not only learn the game, but their time to shine, they, they can, you know, the retention rate is, is kept. And that's something that's really important for Star Citizen right now because it's still under development. Even though you can play the game, you know, new players that come in and say, oh, I spawned in, I'm going to go on my ship, and then, I, oh, I got blown up by some player that's just you know, in a hammerhead ramming pads on, on Port Alisar. You know, that's that's just not fun. You don't you don't wanna have your first experience be negative. And and so I think these these new systems that they have in place are really good for um hopefully mitigating that. Correct me if I'm wrong, didn't they do something to help with pad ramming this patch? They did. Yeah. Actually, I, yeah. What what they introduced a, a fine for pad ramming, right? Um, yeah, that's, they, that's been there for a while, I think. 
they added more systems in place though, so they can tell if uh, a ship was pad rammed or not. Because it used to be like people found a way to make it so it looked like they didn't pad ram, and uh, I, forgot, I don't know exactly how they did it off the top of my head, but they they found essentially a way around it and they patched that out. So now it actually shows up as a pad ram instead of like the person also now um, covering Interesting. A, a landing zone. Because that's actually what it'd show up as is they would hit them just right and it'd pop them just a little over the uh just enough off of the um pad that it would be like then they get that to, you are blocking an active uh, airspace kind of deal uh, oh, okay yeah and then that person would get the fine the crime stat rather than the person who did the pad ramming uh so now it's fixed so if you pad ram you get all of the the issues so yeah um the one thing i have to say though and i'm i'm like in almost everything in life honestly i'm a uh, in the gray side, like I'm not black or white, right? But uh, I even call myself a gray hat hacker. But uh, um, if uh, if you're going thrown in prison uh, right now with a level one crime stat, like for a parking ticket, essentially, which is what is happening, I think that's a little little much. Um, I think you should at least like bare minimum level two uh, before you get thrown in prison. Otherwise, it's just a, a fine or something like that. Or, you know, if yeah. you just happen to run into a police officer, maybe then they throw you in. But, like, it shouldn't be like you get a bounty over your head. Yeah, I agree. And I, I think that the, the current bounty system, while it works to at least display to others that you are um, involved of whatever crime, there needs to be a way to display the severity of that crime. Because as of right now, you could commit... I don't know, for example, 10 parking violations. Now you're up to level two. That sends you into prison. And personally, I don't think that that's prison sentence worthy. Um, now, if you're pad ramming or blowing people up as they, you know, are just doing their own thing, that's something that is prison worthy. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm curious to see how CIG handles this uh, crime stat um, I don't even know what the term would be for it, but if you are giving someone a crime stat, if you have 10 parking violations, should that really bump you up to crime stat level 2 or 3 or whatever? I personally don't think so. I think that there are certain things that you should be able to quote-unquote get away with um, just to, for gameplay's sake that doesn't throw you into a you know prison for 6 hours for you to you know pay off a thousand credits worth of parking violation. And your honor has a good point there. Like if I was a high level bounty hunter, right. And then all of a sudden I went after this person and found out that I like shot them and killed them. And it was only cause they had 10 parking tickets. I'm going to be pissed. <laughs> yeah. Like there, there's no reason a bounty hunter should be going after someone that's, you know, accidentally bumped into a ship or tried to drive a, a rover into someone else's ship, you know, and, and these are a lot of bugs that need to be ironed out, but right. And, you get a crime stat time. for just driving a you know rover into someone's connie, and then and that's just personally not something that you should be getting a crime stat for. I know that's a bug, but if you're dealing damage to a ship in any which way, form, or fashion, that gives you a crime stat, and that shouldn't be something that's happening. Everything right now, though, just to remind everybody, is though like you know tier zero, tier one, two, like. Hopefully, like, you know, in the in the long term, somebody has to, like, actually report you, too. That's the other side of it. Like, uh, I mean, whenever you're claiming a ship that somebody else is in, you're kind of reporting it, in which case that makes sense that it's stolen. Um, but, like, if somebody bumps into your ship, you should have to actually go in and, tie, like, put in a, uh, a file with Agassi and say, hey, you know, this guy over here is a jerk and keeps running into my ship. Like, uh, it shouldn't be an automatic thing. And I hope that's going to be a long-term kind of deal, too. Even if it, like, prompt you, like, hey, do you want to actually report this guy? So I can say, no, it's my buddy. Like, it's fine. It was an accident. Yeah, and I, I don't see that being a, a feature now just because there are so many different things that could cause you to have a fine for ramming into a ship or whatever. Um, but when when the game is finished, I do think that there needs to be a system like what you've said that says, Hey, someone rammed into my ship. 
all right, that, that's fine. We just were flying too close together, and it's me and my friend. Um, so maybe, maybe they can integrate the reporting system with the bounty system. But I do agree, though. Like, it should rather than just be like you have a one through a five star. It should be like here's your actual like rap sheet, right? Like this is actually what you done did, son. <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> they have fifty parking tickets. Oh, well then you know maybe that's that's fifty misdemeanors. Like that's a one star, <laughs> right? And that one star shouldn't warrant um someone coming after you and, and i know that's not how it works now i think you have to have what a three-star bounty at least the last time i played no it's to, uh, one it gone down? it's gone down uh, i've seen it, a lot oh. of people are getting hunted with two stars so oh. um, interesting and you'll and actually like people will come after you for a one star right now with this latest patch so yeah interesting to add on uh, to the, the 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 parking ticket thing i think i think there should be a, an amount of time you have to pay like like you know what i mean you get, you get a fine there's no sense of sending somebody to jail over a few parking tickets but if they have 10 and it's been you know what a week two weeks however long you want and they still have not gone to try to take care of those fines then maybe we should bump them up and and figure out what to do from there because because now they're clearly doing something else um and purposefully parking illegally yeah, and that's um, actually currently the case, by the way, uh, that if uh, if you do it, you get, I think it's like 24, 24 hours, and it adds you uh, like a star for every parking ticket you don't pay, though. That's I think that's the biggest issue. Right, so it should be like every 10 or, or, or every sure. 20 or however many. But Or, or maybe then, even if you have 50, it doesn't matter, you're still like a one star, and it's just if the police see you, they'll come after you, but no sending any bounty hunters, right? Right, something else should be implemented for it, for sure. Um, I, I'm actually sitting here thinking, trying to figure out why somebody would purposely illegally park. And the only reason I can think of is the only way to get into certain ports right now, if you already have a crime stat, is to illegally park. So... Or you're being lazy. That's, <laughs> I mean, that's true, too. Or your comms aren't working or something, but... Most of the time where I've illegally parked, I have a level one crime stat and I can't even pull in to, to the port because uh, because they won't let you park there. So you wait for somebody to open up their bay and you just go, hi, <laughs> and just kind of sneak on in. Um, but I, I, I mean, and, and, and with all the bugs, I think it's, it's going to be risky. It'll definitely change over time, so that'll be interesting to see how it morphs and changes with, with bug fixes. Yeah. And, you know, um, they created two prisons for this uh, current P2. Did you guys hear about that? I did not. I did not. So the other one's Area 18. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't Area 18, like, super broken? Yes, that's exactly what I mean. It's an unintentional prison. <laughs> oh, right, get out right. of there, you're 18 if you go. All right, I'm that's Hotel picking California. Up a yeah. <laughs> Hotel California. You can you can you can spawn there, but you can't leave. <laughs> yeah, I would have been totally fine with uh, that being at Louisville, but uh, Area 18 was so pretty. I, I liked Area 18. Louisville, on the other hand, sucks. <laughs> it was it was about time honestly because i mean every single place that they've added has had a uh you know been at hotel california at one point i mean levski there was the great levski rescues there was the great lorville <laughs> rescues right it was about yeah. time that you know that area 18 had their great uh, lock-in right um that's true that's true the biggest problem is is there's no real place for people to like pick you up in case you do get locked in with Area 18. That's the problem. Like Lorville, you could go run out to the city limits through the outside gates, and then somebody could get you. You can't. Yeah, there's, there's, there's too many barriers keeping you from entering the the streets. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, even if it happens at uh, Microtech at some point, which it's bound to with the way their track record is, um, you can at least run outside and somebody can grab you. So that's true. Next but, patch. <laughs> that's that? what we're hoping, right? <laughs> Next patch. Get it out of the way early. <laughs> um, but uh, you know, it's 
it's uh, unfortunate they're 18 because there's literally nothing you they can they can do to get you out of there <laughs> yeah. or as well so it, so something that i've you know we all know that 3.9 was de- delayed by the desync issues that were a part of 3.8 can anyone confirm whether or not these decent issues are absolved? No, they're not. They're better. They're not. They're much better, but they're not gone. Okay. So I, I had heard that they were gone, uh, but I figured that this would be a good time to inquire about that. Yeah, they're definitely much better. Um, I can tell you from, you know, watching a couple of streamers, um, <laughs> For anybody who hasn't seen my uh, uh, Twitter post, I-, I watch a couple at one time. So uh, uh, I've seen uh, uh, some desync issues, but it's definitely like it's no longer a game breaking desync most of the time. So well, that's good. Um, there was an invisible person um, up until this last patch they pushed today, actually. Your Honor. <laughs> um, <laughs> it, yeah, it was a thing. So, but they've, they've fixed that one now so that it doesn't happen. Um, who was I watching that that was the case? Oh, it was actually Spazzy. Oh, <laughs> Spazzy man. was missing his head. <laughs> uh, there, were, there were so many issues with the desync when it came to invisible people. Yeah. I, I'm I'm really glad it's, it's better. At least we don't have golf balls anymore, right? <laughs> <laughs> Anybody remember the golf ball days? <laughs> I I don't think I was in here during the the golf ball days. At one point, like people spawned in as golf balls. <laughs> Alrighty, I didn't know that was an asset. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was literally a thing. Um, I forgot when that was. I think it was actually three O release. Uh, that was a thing. So. <laughs> yeah, I, I joined uh, in three four. Oh, nice. Um, I remember back. You just reminded me that, like, I used to be like the the new kid on the block when I joined in in two six zero, and like now everybody's like, "Oh, you've been in since two six. Where's your gray beard?" <laughs> <laughs> like, has it really been that long? <laughs> but um, yeah, there's definitely been uh, worse patches. Like, I've seen a lot of people, especially people that are kind of newer to the game, going like, "Oh, this is so horrible," and I'm like. Have you seen, you know, you obviously weren't here for 3, like, 0 through 3, 2. <laughs> and even, like, I remember, what, not 3, 5, was, was it 3, 5? I remember between 3, 4 and 3, 9, 3, 8 was bad, and then there was another really bad patch, and I think it was 3, 5. I think it was, so that's whatever they put three, in five, OCS. Yeah. Because yeah. oh, if man. I'm not mistaken, everybody talks about 3, 4 as, like, the golden days. Yes, three four was and nice. I think I showed up at the very end of three four and the very start of three five. So I got like a week of really good content, and then and then it was, oh, this is how patch. Okay. <laughs> well, so yeah. every two patches it seems like is when it's good or roughly because it, it was three oh sucked like it was unplayable. I can tell you, even the stable version was unplayable. Um, for like, every thirty minutes you'd end up with a thirty k. Um. 3-1 was a little bit better. And then in uh, 3-2, they uh, dropped a uh, um, uh, client side uh, of CS. Um, and then it was, like, I think it, I think you're right, it took them 3-3, three, three, then 3-4 um, was pretty good. Um, and then 3-5, if I remember right, is when they put out socks. So, somewhere around there. No, they put out socks in 3-8. Yeah, 3-8 was socks. Was it? All right. Yeah. I'm wrong then. But... Like every time they've done these massive new uh, new things, like it's broken a lot of things. But yeah, and, and three eight was good aside from the desync issues, from what I remember. I haven't played in a while. Um, and three nine, nine, oh yeah, no, the thirty Ks were were awful on three eight. Um, but you know, the, all of the the bugs and broken shit aside, something that we have to keep in mind is this is very much the alpha phase of a game and this isn't even an alpha phase that you would see in a normal release this is like the pre-alpha this is the the quality assurance this is when people come through and say how can i break this and they break it and and we are privy to that that area of the development where is normal game development or development of any sort you you don't get to see that um so i think while these patches are breaking and they're causing issues over, you know, left and right, 
we are at least a part of the 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 solution for that definitely like um anybody that's actually another kind of common thing that i always try to talk to people that have a lot of salt about and i'm like have you ever done development because i can tell you even like uh stuff that i see all the time that's you know like even like mature developed stuff has bugs <laughs> oh yeah 100 um, percent. so and then like i've seen so many like even with high end like even when i was at amazon we had stuff that got pushed back at times because it couldn't we couldn't get it done um yeah it's a thing. Uh, it's just part of development. So when everybody's like all butt hurt about stuff getting pushed, it's like that's kind of development. Um, and you yeah, realize you are in an alpha. It's not even like a release, like you know, production release. Uh, you know, that's a little bit better. If you know, for instance, if uh, they say like, "Oh, we've released this game and we're going to do a DLC in some amount of time," that's a little different. I mean. I I would agree. I would agree. It's also to be expected in any development that that it's going to get pushed back. Um, I think what I end up feeling most frustrated with is the lack of communication on it. I know we have the roadmap, um, and I know we get dev updates, roadmap. but a lot of the time, right? So they feel for me, it feels like the stereotypical, um, like beating around the bush. It feels like they beat around the bush a lot for me, but that's because I know how to pick up on a lot of that language. Um, and I understand why they're doing it, but I honest to God think if they were just super honest and super straightforward about everything, people wouldn't get as butthurt. Like when they said, you know, COVID-19 is pushing us back. We expect that from almost every developing company. It's going to happen. People are now forced home. Development's going to slow down a bit. It's it's natural, but it felt like an excuse because we had so little communication beforehand about what was slowing them down. Like yeah. I mean, I mean, I want super specific. Not like I don't want your code, but I want to know what's 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 holding you up. Why why is it breaking? What are you working towards? Stuff like that. It sounds like you want yeah. all devs back. <laughs> yeah, I would rather have that than a a roadmap because, you know, I'm I'm in no means a veteran or veteran backer to Star Citizen, but you know, like you said, I'm very well aware of how development works, and I think that it would be better if we didn't have a roadmap and we had a, hey, these are the things that we're gonna try to get in, and then these are the things that are holding us up, right. because I th I think that that would communicate better. You know, you know, we all know that server meshing is a big thing. We all know that socks is a big thing. Um, and and these these two gigantic problems that haven't been solved yet are what's changing a lot of the the roadmap from you know day in day out. And if if they said you know, hey, server meshing is on its way. We're at this point. We can do this internally. It's not ready to to be reproduced externally. That would be, to me, a lot more beneficial than saying, hey, we're adding some moons. And, and that's just something that, you know, as a roadmap for a game development, you, you really only get those post-beta. You only get those when the game has been flushed out and it's playable. And, you know, Star Citizen is playable, albeit a little bit buggy. <laughs> <laughs> but you know we have these problems that are in in uh, I guess traditional development would be internal, and that's fine. We all bought into this game knowing that. And if you really want to convey what the situation is, you need to say, "Hey, these are the specific issues that are holding us up." And I think we got a little bit of that in three point nine with the desync. Um, yeah. But you know that that's not something that's been you know, talked about before. Um, they they talk about the server FPS issues and, and how they're going to move to server meshing, but, like, they don't really convey how they're going to get to server meshing or, you know, what things need to be done before they can get to server meshing. And, and maybe as, not as a developer, but as a systems engineer, I, I kind of understand the development process and the overall view. So maybe I'm 
wanting more than what they are able to give. But I do think from a, a standpoint of, or a, a development standpoint, that would be, those would be good things to, to convey to the community. Well, so a little backstory on that, actually, they used to. Um, and then they got a whole salt fest whenever they were talking about stuff. And then people were like, well, you're not giving us enough communication or enough details. So then they put the details as a way to solve that. Now uh, they're kind of like, well, it's there. And then they uh, used to actually get called to carpet about stuff that they uh, would talk about. Like, how do you not have that done? You know, insert salt throwing here. So I, I feel like it's, for their case, they're just kind of actually now trying to be uh, um, business conscious, I guess the best way to put it, where they're doing the least amount that they can do uh, just to keep a, a low uh, lawsuit or so, whatever have you profile. It's kind of my, my feeling, based off of especially the history of some of the stuff that's happened with them. So. Right. So Yuruna, if I say that wrong, I'm sorry says that um, it's too time-consuming to tell a community about everything on the scale that SIG and, and maintain security. And I, I would agree. You're very right, um, as, as Kay Penguin said. Very right. But I think the salt's going to happen no matter what. We're seeing, we're seeing a lot of salt with, with the way they're currently handling things. And I don't need every little detail, but I want more. And the people who are salty can shove it. And I think the other way to, to handle this would be to stop hyping so many things up, especially since we all know that it's going to get pushed back. I agree. And so much time pushing hype for new features that it, it ends up making it worse in the long run. Yeah, you're, you're totally right. And... I think a solution to that would be to say, you know, kind of along the lines of what we've said is just be transparent. You know, right. if, you know, for example, socks is giving you troubles in this certain area, just say that, you know, we don't need to know, Hey, socks is going to be done by this date. I'd rather know, Hey, we're trying to push out socks. These are the problems that we're trying to tackle. And, and I don't need to know the specifics of how you're tackling that or, how long it's going to take. I'd rather just know that it's going to be finished at some point. And these are the problems that we have to overcome. And once we overcome these, then we're good to go. Yeah, I agree. And they used to have a venue for that. It was called Calling All Devs. And uh, mm -hmm. I feel like they really do need to bring it back. So I, I can definitely agree yeah. with that. But I also, like, like a... when they had Calling All Devs, um, they were getting called the carpet for that too. So I feel like they're, they're probably at the point now where they feel like they can't win. But also... Um, I, I feel like that sometimes they overhype stuff because they have a dedicated team to hype stuff. And so it's hyping stuff for the sake of hyping stuff. Um, so that way that team can maintain busyness, right? And I, I think that's kind of also part of the problem. As much as I, I really love that team because I've met most of them in person. <laughs> yeah, and, and go ahead, go ahead, Drew. Well, I'm just reading chat. Hype is a massive tool for getting more money for to fund development. And... Yes, I think, however, at this point, they're actually hurting that um, with the way they handle their hype. Yeah, um, I, 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 still, I still want the hype because I still want to be excited for things. But right now, they start hyping something, and I'm like, I'll get, I'll get excited when I actually see it getting put into a patch. Yeah. And, and I think that's, that's the killer, is that there's hype, and then there's, hmm, that's the response from the, a lot of the community at least the people I talk to, is when it's there, then I'll get excited. So, so I think, I think, yeah, I think, I think the transparency really needs to come to the forefront. Yeah, and, and like Penguin said, if it was there initially, I understand why it was pushed back. I get that. Um, however, I think that CIG should just, you know, fucking put their foot on the ground and say, hey, this is the way we're going to show you our development. And if you don't like it, then screw them off. You know, because the, the, the backers that really want to see this game be what it can be and what it will be are the ones that are going to stick by whatever decision. And the, the people that come in and say, oh, I don't like the way this is working, those, those, those people are just going to be gone until the game comes out anyway. 
So if they, if they can just later push forward. Gets fixed. <laughs> exactly, yeah. yeah. And, you know, I think a lot of people don't realize that this game is in a, you know, we can play it, yes, but these these bugs that we have are going to be internal bugs and everything that would have been fleshed out before it got to a beta or an alpha for any other normal game. So you have to, you know, be in the mindset this, that this game's broken. There are a lot of broken things about it. Um, but I can at least play and experience things that they want us to experience in these patches. And that's good enough for me. But I'd also like to follow the development process. And that's why people, at least for me, that's why I bought into this game. I've been following it since the Kickstarter. I never really got the chance to to buy in as a backer until last year. But you know, I followed this development because this is something that I want to see. And coming from a software development perspective, you want to see things that are relevant to a patch or uh, a new thing that's being implemented, not just, hey, we brought in the Prowler. Like, yeah, cool. You brought in the new ship. That's great. And and I understand that that's a big part of the funding. And I, I love that about this game is that they're not, you know, they don't have some big producer that says hey you need to finish this game in, a, in two years and I, I i respect that and i love that about cig but at the same time you need to have a little bit more transparency if you want to move away from a producer's pr- uh, perspective well and there's two other things that i've kind of been hearing a lot uh, from my sources and other people with sources too and that is uh it is very uh, micromanagey in CIG. So sometimes I almost yeah. wish that they would have a producer just to kind of force them to actually, you know, get stuff going. But at the same time, I'm glad they don't. <laughs> like, if they had a producer, that micromanagement wouldn't be able to happen because they couldn't in order to get yeah. like, anything out. <laughs> and, and while I agree with that statement, and I've definitely heard many uh, things about the micromanagement, micromanagement from Chris Roberts, uh, Sorry, bro. It happens. I get it. Mm-hmm. But, you know, there, there's going to be a, a point where you allow the development to go ahead and move through without hiving up these things that aren't just, they're just not ready. Um, whereas, you know, the development of this game is funded solely off the community and, you know, a couple of angel investors. That's great. I love it. And I think that you should keep pumping out ships. But, they need to start kind of lassoing in these core features and core gameplay elements that will allow the the game to move forward. So, um, you know, go ahead. I, I have heard something to that effect quite a few times. Um, it's actually something they addressed once because they got really bad, I think, around 3.1. Um, those are different teams. Uh, I, I agree with the hype thing, by the way. Like, Pretty much, if you hype something at all, it better be released. <laughs> and that, oh, yeah, 100%. Like, that, that is 100%. Like, if you hype something too many times and it doesn't get, and it's kind of to Idril's point too, um, that if you hype something and it doesn't get released so many times, they're going to, like, you know, they're not going to believe you. I'm, I'm that way. I'm like, ah, I'll believe you. Like, I even predicted whenever they did this last time, like, New Babbage isn't going to show up. <laughs> they said <laughs> it's going to, it's not going to. Uh, and, you know, well, people more technically there. Yeah. But, you know, really there. Um, so if you're going to hype something, this is something that a lot of your, even your uh, bigger, you know, AAA game studios and stuff have figured out is, is you only hype what you know you can do. And then the rest of it is bonus. Hey, guess what? Release something and there's all this cool stuff that we didn't talk about. And it's extra layering of hype because you have your uh, build up hype and then you have your, okay, we got this other extra stuff in here and now extra hype. So. Yeah. And. Uh, I I definitely see that with CIG, and I think that they're kind of caught in a rock and a or between a rock and a hard place. You know, they're they're developing Squadron Forty Two, as well as the public universe for Star Citizen, and we don't get to see a lot of what's going on with Squadron Forty Two. I think, and maybe this is just hopeful on my part, but I think that a lot of the systems that we really want, um, and and the the core gameplay aspects of star citizen are probably already implemented and way more fleshed out than we see but bringing that to a multiplayer universe is 
way more difficult. And all we really see is the multiplayer universe. We, we get to see the things that they can implement in, you know, a 70% fashion. And that's fine. But, you know, until Squadron 42 is done and, and out and everything from there is good to go, we won't really see a big major improvement on the PU development because there's so many other things that have to be kind of hush hushed and uh, set aside for hype that they have to just hype up ships or you know the prison gameplay system and all these things and they have to kind of scrounge around and find things to hype about that while they are really neat and interesting they're features that aren't particularly useful um or maybe they're not completed or whatever or understood like the building block stuff like nobody understood like building blocks oh yeah no you're right building blocks was something that you hear the word building blocks or the words building blocks what is that what, how is that important well it allows them to build things you know exponentially faster than they used to and that's a really important thing to have but does it really matter all that much for us to know about probably not you know, if they can pump out more content faster, that's more important. Or, hey, this content is now able to be produced because we have this system in place. And, and those are the things. That Go is ahead. actually what they finally, the first, you know, it's like they, they're they quick to uh, figure out that they made a mistake, but they never really think about it ahead of time. Because they said like uh, three weeks ago, like, oh, we've got this new building blocks tool out and it's so awesome. They never did say, like, trying to your point of why that's awesome um, until... This last what, what about uh, like last, what, three weeks ago, basically? No, they, it was actually not even that. It was this last uh, um, USPU, which I think was just a few days ago. They found like, oh. oh, and here's why that was important. <laughs> and so yeah. it's taking me a week now. It takes me twenty to tw- two hours, twenty minutes to two yeah. hours instead. So and Yuma has said something very important here. Is you know I think we'll see a lot of mechanics start coming out next year because without all the back end those mechanics would could be broken and by server meshing and stuff. And that's a really big thing is we are kind of in a stagnated development with the public universe for the MMO of Star Citizen because these huge mechanics are not, not mechanics, but um, back-end processes like socks and server meshing are not fully developed. And, and I think personally, as soon as those are developed, we will see a big push towards these, you know, gameplay loops being finished, um, being able to improve the frame rate of the servers, all of these important things that are the the backbone of Star Citizen starting to be pushed through. Um, but until we have those things done, we will never know. Definitely agree. So, um... Idril, what's your uh, favorite uh, spot on uh, New Babbage that you've seen so far, whether they're watching people or whatnot? I like the club. I like the which club one? because of how much is going, the only one I've seen, which is very purple. <laughs> it looks like you walk in, like, Maddie LaRusso's house. Um, <laughs> like, we, I want, Spazzy walked in, and we're both like, oh my god, this is Maddie's place. Like, but I, I think I really like that in certain areas, it really just felt like you were you were actually there. You walked into a room with bass, and it felt like you were in some very loud club. Like I know which one you say that like I've ever been in a club and not just very loud bars. <laughs> um, but but like it had that feel that was just like wow, that's really cool that they put that in there. The food's really cool looking. But this felt, it felt immersive. It felt like you were just there. I think I really liked that. What about you, Cesium? So I am much more of an environment enthusiast. I really appreciate all of the things that they can do internally inside of a building, but just being able to see what planetary tech V4 has been able to do for Microtech um, for me is something that's really interesting. You know, we, we didn't have these sandstorms, snowstorms, uh, these different 
things that affect our character other than just, you know, I hopped out of my ship and now I'm on a planet or a moon or whatever. So being able to fly around, you know, New Babbage or Microtech in general, and you know, hop out of your ship and your visor on your helmet just fogs up or becomes frosted because of how cold it is, is something that I think is really interesting and, and not something that we see in a lot of other um, games or platforms or whatever. It's, it's something that is integral to Star Citizen's identity. And I, I just like being able to explore and, and see all of the different, you know, mountainous regions, the 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 forests or whatever, the, the frozen water. Just being able to fly around and see this is something new that we wouldn't have been able to have had they not introduced this planetary tech before. Yeah. And I mean, you know, V5 is right around the corner with the flat surfaces and everything, right? So <laughs> I'm, I'm very excited for flat planets um, <laughs> or circles, I should say, because, you know, we all know that the universe and stars and all that, that's just fake. That's all Na- NASA propaganda. Yeah. <laughs> So for me, like, I literally joined the game because of New Babbage and Microtech. <laughs> so <laughs> this is a little bit of me, like, schoolgirling a little bit on the other side. Um, especially whenever they finally, I'm like, it's going to be the planet with the penguins on it. You watch. And, you know, it's everything. And so then like, they release the penguin, and I'm like, <laughs> So I got a little too excited about it. I won't lie. Uh, That's pretty okay. You're but, done. You're happy now. You 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 don't care where the game goes from here. You're it's complete for you as far as you're concerned. That's not true. But I now have my home. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, like I still need uh, you know, my base building win. Like I I didn't buy a Pioneer to have it look pretty in my uh, you know, ship catalog because I can't even pl- like fly it yet. Um, you know, I I still want to see medical gameplay come a little further than what it is right now. Like. I want to be able to come to any of you guys and stab you in the face with a MediPen at least. <laughs> so, you know, there's a few things like that that I I definitely want to see have happen. But, um, yeah, it, it was definitely a good thing. I, I like Wally's the most. Uh, like, I've actually uh, liked the sound, like the music that they're doing in Wally's because there's uh, three different types of music. There's the, like, the bassier one and the one you went to. Then there's the one that's, like, not too far from it. It looks almost exactly the same. The only real way I can tell the difference is one of them has, like, a raining effect in it, and the other one doesn't. Um, and, like, one's a little more jazzy, and one's a little more, like, upbeat, like, in your face. And then there's Wally's, which is kind of, like, just a good, like, so you were going to a, uh, like, Red Rocks uh, uh, festival or something like that, so. Yeah, I'd agree. So, I have a question for all of y'all, and for everyone in chat and and Andrew and you penguins. What is the one gameplay feature that you would like to see implemented as soon as possible? I can start, even though it's not my gameplay loop. Refueling. <laughs> <laughs> J gets thirsty. It, it really does. What about you, Angel? Uh, part of me wants to say refinement, but my, my real answer is I just want to see some very small quality of life updates. And I know they're working on it, as we can see with like the 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 friends list and and the, the attachments. But like in your in your mo- in your Moby Glass, you, you equip something and you go back to the main screen, right? And it, it pulls you back. You have to continually re-switch around tabs. I feel like that'd be an amazing quality of life thing to just implement now. Because quality of life updates that are super small and super quick to push out really, really help with usability and keeping people involved. Um, they seem simple and super unimportant but i found that a simple ui update changes everything for people playing and i really think that's something i would like to see implemented like asap it's just fix your fix your i know they're doing like a moby glass rework i understand that 
but man, just put in like like three lines of code. I don't actually know if it's three lines of code. That's that's a little bit presumptuous of me. But if it's go, it probably is. <laughs> it just might be but, but, three very long lines of code. <laughs> but uh but but yeah, just just keep Moby Glass from, from going back and forth when you're in it or you know simple little fixes. I'm sure there's other ones that I can't think of that if I'd been paying attention to more recently I'd have more of a list. That one has bugged me since since I joined is when you equip a piece of armor goes back to the beginning and I'm like, No. I think they made it a little better, but it's still buggy and that bothers me. Yeah, I, I definitely think that quality of life improvements are very important for this this game. But at the same time, I'd rather them focus on adding core gameplay. Uh, yeah. Or, or fixing things that would allow the game to be what they envision it to be. True. And, you know, while the mobile glass is very annoying and, you know, navigation is super annoying, mm -hmm. I'd rather deal with that bug than not have the core gameplay loops for certain, you know, professions be out of the game. You know, I, 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 for me, you know, I guess kind of going to answer my question, um, I'd like to see them start focusing on fixing the, or not fixing, but implementing the, the core mechanics for the professions that they want. You know, we, we currently in the verse have, you know, mining, we've got cargo running, We've got bounty hunting, albeit a little bit, you know, I don't know, just crappy, I guess. Uh, you can pretty much right now as a bounty hunter select the bounty that you want, and then you have to go find that person. And that's kind of buggy or whatever, not quite implemented properly. That's fine. But I think that if they can get the, the core gameplay loops out as soon as possible, this game, albeit in alpha, will be closer to what it should be uh on release i mean medical is kind of like a negative 0.5 tier right now right so i mean it's yeah. in but it's not <laughs> yeah it's there because you can respawn wherever you need to if you have the correct ship but well and you can also fly like if somebody's hurt you could technically fly in and like put them on your cutty red and have them lay down in your bed and it'll heal them it will heal you on the beds but it's definitely not you know what i'm a little more flushed out or even like kind of like what i consider a basics medical gameplay like like i said the basics would be like the next thing they need to add is let me stab you in the face with a, a medical pen right or something like that at least so yeah and and i get that and you know from a development standpoint there are a lot of other things that are way more important than you know quality of life improvements or gameplay loop improvements but if you're going to be developing a game where throughout the process you, you know, have these increments where you can deploy the game and people can play it, I think it's more important to focus on these core gameplay aspects than to focus on, you know, we added a prison. Like, well, that might be relatively cornered in the core gameplay of bounty hunting. There are many other things that could be fixed aside from that. Yeah, I would agree. I would agree. I think what I personally want is minor in, in the big scale of things. So, yeah. Well, I don't I mean, have a better answer, though. They actually talked about this once again, and uh, I forgot which one of the shows I watched the last few, like back to back, and they're kind of blurred together, to be honest. But, uh, uh, Ship permissions <laughs> would be really handy. So you're kind of referring to the multi-crew gameplay uh, aspect of it yeah. fleshed out? Where you can say like, hey, you know, Cesium over here is, you know, totally cool if he takes my 890J on a joyride. It's, you know, it's fine. He can spawn it even. I don't care. Um, or, you know, but, uh, you know, if Idril hops on... It, uh, maybe she's allowed into the ship, but don't let her like use the docking bay or, or not the docking bay. Like take out my uh, my um, 
what is it, 85 X and Gopher Joy and that. Like she's a lot on board, but don't let her into the you know really cool toys or something to that effect, right? Like or vice versa. <laughs> yeah, no, I I agree. I think that multi crew is not even close to being flushed out to where it needs to be. I mean, the last time I played, I don't know if it's changed since then. You could, you know, join. Say, you know, we're we're all in a cutty. Someone's in the the pilot seat. Someone else is in the co-pilot seat. You couldn't even adjust the um, the power ratio between thrusters, weaponry, and um, the other third thing that I'm blanking on. You know, there there's certain things about multi crew that absolutely have to be implemented, and in my personal opinion, should be worked on way prior to adding a prison system for bounties you know you know we could definitely use someone in the, the co-pilot seat saying all right well, i'm gonna you know move the the power towards the weapons because we are being shot at okay you know and maybe i need to adjust that towards the shields i can you know overclock the the, the turret and leave the the normal weapons off overclock and you couldn't do that at some point. And I think that that's really important because as soon as multi-crew is fleshed out, then there will be a lot more people running larger ships. And maybe this isn't something that's been fleshed out because they don't want people running around in a hammerhead with a co-pilot that can just, you know, murder everyone in their path. And that's fine. I get that. But at the same time, I'd rather have a four hammerheads show up with a crew that can do everything well and destroy my little freelancer max than them say, Hey, you rammed into a ship one too many times. You gotta go to prison, bud. <laughs> with your hammerhead, it's got a ramming head on it. <laughs> yeah. Like they have it on, on ships that have an engineering position, um, which is usually not on the bridge. Uh, you can do it from there. It will work, uh, but any co-pilot stuff definitely still does not work anymore. Yeah, and you know that's kind of why they exist. No, not only that. If you have somebody hop in a co-pilot seat, nine out of ten times it'll lock the pilot into their seat, like they can't leave. Oh yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. It's like that was a really big problem with the caterpillar. It's not even uh, like a plus. It's actually a negative to have a co-pilot right now. Like it's kind of dissuading you from having a multi-crew. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. I mean, we get a little bit with, you know, like the fact that you can have multi-crew where you have all your people and guns, but uh, like the engineering or the co-pilot or the captain kind of roles are definitely not there. Yeah, they're all locked into one role, and that's whoever's piloting the ship. Mm -hmm. Well, and it's also whoever's piloting has kind of got like the, the main role and it overrides all the rest. Um, yeah. Like, for instance, like Elena AJ, where there's two, technically two bridges, right? But yeah. Um, you can't actually, you can't even have uh, two people in the same type of turret spot right now. Like, even though there's two turret positions, uh, one within each bridge, you can't have the same person sitting or having somebody sit in both of them because it'll lock each other out. And it's like those kind of things where multi-crew in general uh, needs needs some work. And they actually talked about it, which was good and a little bit encouraging when they admitted that's a big problem that they need to work on. Um and it's also kind of cool the fact that uh, since why they've been at home, they've actually started to feel some of our pain a little bit more, which is why we got the friends thing so quickly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's true. You know, like the the friends list update is very welcomed, and I I really appreciate that. Um, there was so many so many issues with trying to get people together in a crew larger than like two people. And and so these these updates are really good, and these are those quality of life updates that you were talking about, Adriel. So these are really important to making the game playable for everyone. Yeah, like they talked about uh, what they did is they tried to get 50 of them into a server to play together, and it took them, like, I think they said 35 minutes. Yeah. Um, and they're like, that's, that's not okay. <laughs> um, yeah, it shouldn't be. But another interesting thing that came out of that is they said, well, we know part of the problem is the servers, but we don't have enough funding to do better servers. 
Uh, they did actually disprove me on one thing, though, in that process, which is they did actually admit that they are running microservices behind the scenes. But still, why is why is that a problem whenever they've got as much funding as they do? I don't know. It almost sounds to me like they are a little bit uh, unable to handle their money right. But, uh, you know, that, that it was good to see that at least they came out of all that, <laughs> that we got the really nice friend UI. Yeah. And I I don't know if they're necessarily misbudgeting things, but I think that us as as players and backers, we don't really see the the big picture. We don't know where things are. We don't know where things will be aside from the hype of a new ship coming out or what they expect to push in a patch. So, you know, this whole oh, they're mismanaging their money or they're, you know, doing things wrong. That's kind of our viewpoint where in the grand scheme of things, you know, four or five years from now, this game is going to be what it needs to be and it'll be where we expect it to be. And and how that gets there, I don't know. But in terms of the financial standpoint i think that they're in a really good position but they can't really tell us how good of a position they're in true yeah there's some legalities and stuff with with that even all right let's hit the last topic uh before we uh do the rounds and end up out of here um let's talk about and you guys kind of already uh, lightly touched on it but the newest game mechanic that they did add which was the whole temperature uh aspect temperature and food uh, what what is your guys's uh we call this one up one down on that um one thing you liked about it one thing you hate about it <laughs> let's start with you Idra, this time oh no um <laughs> i think food is a super cool concept i i'm excited for it it's going to be another thing to micromanage but um i i like that they've put in all the little things in New Babbage. Uh, I don't like how very little of it there actually is now that they've put it in. Um, <laughs> which I understand why they've done that. But um, and, and so this is really hard for me to speak about because I haven't personally experienced it either. So you said the temperature stuff. I mean, like all the new... If you go outside, for instance, with uh, just a very light jacket, you're going to freeze to death and die <laughs> right now. Right. Um, so or I if you go like on that. To, the, to the desert, you're going to run out of water. Uh, and there's a hydration aspect, too. Um, essentially, like an environment uh, effect on you um, kind of portion. I, I think it's super cool. I don't think there's any gameplay around it. Like, so I think I think in concept, it's really awesome. It's going to be. It's going to be great. I don't ever get out of my ship most of the time right now or where I do at low grav. So I, I'm in a suit, right? We're wearing suits almost all the time. There's no real gameplay around either one of those concepts at the moment. So so there is that, one aspect to it, which is uh, actually your flight suits are rated at certain temperatures and stuff too. Um, okay, so has but has that been implemented yet? Yes, it has. Uh, okay. And one of the ones that is the worst is the prison one. Oh. <laughs> so you get eight minutes from the time you finally like escape out of the door to find either a rover to steal or B, you need to uh, uh, have somebody pick you up within eight minutes, otherwise you die. It's too hot. Okay. But that's it. <laughs> All right, see you. I kind of agree with Idril in in the sense that it's an interesting mechanic and something that the game will eventually need. But my personal opinion is it's it's a mechanic that wasn't necessary for the overall development of this game. I think, and and this is just me pulling this out of my out, out of the air. I think that this mechanic was introduced because there wasn't a lot to push towards for 3.9, 4.0, etc. Um, now, we all know that the situation that we're in right now is 
inhibiting a lot of development, um, whether people like it or not. But I don't think that having a temperature to monitor, uh, hydration and hunger to monitor is very important for the game. You know, we, we should be focusing on having major gameplay aspects focused on like mining, um, refinery, uh, refineries, being able to plop down your own plot of land and build on that, uh, having uh, refueling, bounty hunting, all of that should have been, in my opinion, a little bit more focused on. Um, but that being said, I think at least so far how it's implemented is really good. Um, Idril, you mentioned that there's not a lot of uh, food or drink options, and while I agree, eh, you know we're we're all well aware that that's just kind of how it's going to be. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, they can't just they can't just add a hundred objects into the game and say, oh yeah, they all work. It's just not <laughs> how it works. <laughs> Um, That'd be great, though. <laughs> hey, at least it would I can be great. Wear my high heels now too, so there's. <laughs> there you go, and and those are those are great aspects to the game that are quote unquote quality of life improvements. But I just don't think that they're the right move towards um, retainment of new players or uh, really progressing through the gameplay. I think that other things should have been focused on, but I'm still very appreciative of these new things that we have to micromanage because I do fully expect this game to be, you know, something where you you spend a lot of time just keeping your character being the way you want it to be. And that's something that I really love about Star Citizen. And, And we're getting closer to that, but I just personally don't think that was the right time to move closer to that. Yeah, I, I personally think that they did it mostly because of the prison system. I think that's the main reason why they did it. Because um, otherwise, if, you know, right now, if somebody would totally just get out and run the 200 meters or whatever it is to actually get to the nearest place and however long it took them, they would do it. Uh, but now there's that added aspect of you get out of prison and now you have an eight minute timer because otherwise you're going to, you know, run out of, well, you're, you're going to pretty much fry to death, actually. Uh, so I, I can see that being a, a thing. But um, I, I also agree with you that in general, you need to add more of these tier, tier zero stuff. Even if it's very basic kind of stuff, like at least let me buy a plot of land and call it my own, right? Or something like that, right? Like, tier zero stuff um, for each of these. Yeah. Uh, nothing else. So that way we can tell that they're going to add them because there's a part of me that's secretly afraid that they're not going to. Um, even though I know it's not going to be the case. Um, so I, I think that'll that'll be a good thing. But um, I th- think that's uh, we're at the end of our show right now. And uh, as we're going around uh, the circle, if you will, uh, starting with the, the handsome devil below me, uh, we will uh, <laughs> we'll go there, uh, ask any questions you guys want to in chat. Um, type the command it gives you the instructions and uh, we'll answer them but for right now let's start with you cesium who are you what do you do what's your what's special about you and uh what's your parting words of wisdom so as you said i'm cesium 117 i'm uh a little bit out of practice on the, the streaming forefront but uh you know we all came into this to portray and, and be the, the forefront for information on, on Star Citizen and other games and be able to build a community. And, and that's, that's what I'm here for. That's what's uh, important for me. Um, you know, we're all, we're all doing, doing our own thing and the situation we're in right now is a little scuffed, but we're making do with what we have. And uh, hopefully we'll see some greater things within the Star Citizen uh, development process and community in the in the near future um, and, and that's just kind of what I'm hoping for is I want to provide more star citizen content for the community and continue to help the night crew grow and we'll, we'll see where that leads Idril? Um, hi I'm Idril Crossfoot if you really want to add the full name um, I do things. 
with streaming. Um, I stream a variety. I generally try to get Star Citizen in once a week because it now holds a special place in my heart. Um, I don't think I've been very good at that recently. Uh, I did fall a victim to some of the burnout with the gameplay loops. So I am hoping this patch brings in some new stuff for me to dig my fingers into and spend some time um, back in the verse. What's your uh, parting words of wisdom? Parting words of, oh no. Oh no. Um, it's okay, I skipped that too. <laughs> parting words of wisdom. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking. Don't. I don't have anything. Um. <laughs> All right. Don't cut your own hair in quarantine. Well, I've already broken that rule, but I actually know how to do it. Is that why you're wearing a hat? (laughs) It is, in fact, why I'm wearing a hat. So, uh, can't. Yeah. Anyway, don't do that. It's a mistake. (laughs) Nice. Um, For you guys who don't know me, MK Penguins, uh, I stream. I promise, although I haven't streamed in the last couple of weeks, it's because partly because of uh, actually some system issues, um, as well as a new job, but also a complete studio rebuild. I saw a sneak peek coming up on there. Uh, I've got some YouTube stuff coming soon, uh, working on that, a, a uh, an actual story one, where it'll be kind of like a uh, fan story film as well as a computer build uh, for a mini PC, and uh, I look into my gaming PC. And then um, I've got uh, some uh, how-to stream tip uh, videos as well. So check those out if you're interested. Um, What else? I tend to stream on uh, nighttime, so there's that. And um, my parting words of wisdom is, is... Remember, there's always a uh, reaction to every action you take. So if you want to um, be salty, you're going to get uh, salty reactions. And if you want to uh, be a griefer or a pirate, understand that there are reactions to that too, which is now prison. Um, even though it's a little harsh at the moment, in my opinion. Uh, that's, that's what I got there. Um, I do want to highlight that um, actually one of our... Uh, uh, a couple of our members on the team have been doing some good work. Uh, Spazzy put out a really awesome news video on YouTube recently, so check that out. If you haven't noticed, the Night Crew actually has a YouTube, and it's actually been filled out and populated, and it's pulling in all these videos from all of our members, as well as some of our own. Uh, like you can actually see all of our shows up on there now, uh, as well as um, another thing to call out is the Segelian's uh, Late Night Crew show is tomorrow night. So one on one, we've seen some really, really good, uh, uh, good things. Um, let me fix that. Um, there we go. Now you should be good. Uh, yeah, all right. And uh, yeah, so it's a lot of his stuff is really good. Like we he had uh, Dad Lando recently, and that was actually like honestly, if you haven't seen it, check it out. Like. I had to go back and rewatch all the rest of it again because I liked it that much, and I don't really usually like those that much, to be honest. But um, so it's he's got some really good guests on there, and he's doing really good stuff. Uh, so check that out. All the stuff and all the places you can find Night Crew underscore SC. We're on Facebook, TikTok, uh, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and here. So check it out. You'll find cool stuff in each one of those. We're uh, pushing to do even more in the near future. Uh, reminder that Mayhem and Hex Talk will be coming back in May. So check this out. If you guys don't know, Hex Talk is our underground uh, news show for all things that are uh, a little more hush hush usually in certain circles. So uh, that's where you'll find about Pirate Talk as well as um, Bounty Hunters, all that kind of stuff. So it's a little more uh, of an interesting show. And then uh, Mayhem is our eSports events. Um, we will be doing single-day, two-division uh, events for those with cash prizes at the end of them. All right, gift card prizes, but same thing. Uh, upwards to $700 for each one uh, for the for prize pot. So check it out and keep tuned. And 
If you haven't followed all of our stuff, please do. Once again, we have uh, CZM117. We've got Idril underscore Frostfoot, I believe, on uh, Twitch, right? Yeah? Yep. I think so. Um, give them a follow. Show them some love. Uh, and uh, the one last thing to mention, because it's kind of important, We've officially announced the signing of our three newest members to the team, including Idril Frostfoot. So uh, the other one being Jay Fish Media and um, oh crap, I'm totally blanking on the spot right now. Gandor. Gandor, Olap, the other co-hosts. <laughs> um, all three of them are wonderful, hand-picked, uh, amazing people, and we are super excited to have them on the team. So round of applause for sure on that one. Uh, thank you guys for coming to join us, and we're excited to see what's going on with that. Uh, if you guys know anybody that's interested in the team, we do actually have uh, an application on our website now, so check it out and apply, and as long as you meet our minimum requirements, we'll check you out. And if you guys, I guess it's another last plug, nightcrew.games, the website's actually up and mostly working, uh, so do that. And hey, look, very good timing, bot. Yeah. Uh, we had some questions real quick before we run away, uh, so I want to hit them quickly. Uh, have you read the read the Quanta AMA, and if so, what do you think? Have any of you guys actually read it? I haven't. Uh, I have not, personally. Um, come back next week. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what is the biggest feature on the roadmap for you? Uh, let's hit you this time, Cesium. Biggest feature? Uh, I want AI, AI updates, uh, whether that be in in ship or you know on ground. Um, I'm really looking forward to the updates that they make to 3D pathing and, and the uh, boots on ground AI. Cool, Idro. I don't know. I <laughs> <laughs> um, habitually I just don't look at the roadmap. Um, when I start to get excited about something, I do go occasionally check and see if it's on the roadmap or hear it word of mouth or something. But for the most part, I do not go out of my way to go check the roadmap. It makes me salty. <laughs> so, I don't know. Okay. Uh, I, I don't even know what to be excited for right now. <laughs> hard to look that far in the future with CIG, so. Well, if I had anything to say about that, I'd say, like, uh, the AI updates. Um, I think, for myself, the biggest thing is just, I'm excited, although I think they might have removed them, uh, the jump gate to Pyro. Mm. Uh, I think that's the thing I'm most excited for. I've been, uh, trying to call that for, like, the last two Citizen Cons, so... I was finally right. <laughs> um, and I, I think that uh, Pyro will be a quicker system, and then we'll get Nyx in the mix, because we've already got Nyx's main uh, planetoid in there. So, yeah. But And, yeah, that's a pretty accurate uh, you're, you're on it. It's usually, I've noticed it's been about 70% um, is made it through. Uh, that's actually on there, which is actually a little bit sad. It means they need a little bit more help with project management because it should be like 90%, but it never will be 100% ever, not even for the pros. No, never, ever. Um, it should be closer to 90, especially this many years in. So, yeah. But that's all right, I suppose. Um, That could be worse. It could be 25%. <laughs> that's true. That's <laughs> like we true. had this patch. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but usually it's 70%. All right. Well, um, thank you, everybody who uh, came to watch us. You guys make it worth it for us doing this. Um, special call out to Yorana, especially for being super active in chat. It makes it a lot easier for us. And, you know, rather than just talking to ourselves. So appreciate it. Uh, I saw Jay Mitch show up as well and some of our other night crew friends. So thank you guys for being here. Um, but, uh, Thank you, too, as well, for showing up on the show and uh, last minuteing it to some extent. So appreciate that. And all the support you guys are bringing in and everything. So uh, hopefully uh, see everybody again in two weeks, myself. Otherwise, next week, Gandora will be taking over for his first show. So check that out. Um, but other than that, cheers, everybody. Take care. See you all. Thank you so much. <laughs>